Hi, so in this video, I want to talk about using DEX. Far too often, I see Python code that inserts or deletes elements at the front of a list. For example, code that may look like this. Let's say we have this list, one, two, three, four, five. And what I see is there's a lot of insertions being done at the first position, so at zero, right? So that's inserting at the front of the list, like something like that maybe. So if we look at L, of course, that's now the first element, right? The one that we just added. The other thing too is deleting from the front of the list. So we can delete the element at the index position zero, like that. And so if you look at the list, you now have back, you know, one, two, three, four, five. You can also use pop, which does kind of the same thing as delete, except it also returns the value. So if we pop this element, we're going to get one that's going to get returned from this. So we could actually just say result equals L dot pop zero. Again, this is popping the first element. We can look at what the result is. It's one. And then the list was also mutated. The first element was removed. The problem with inserting or deleting elements at the beginning of a list is that it is actually very inefficient. Now, sure, if you just do it a few times, you know, here and there in your app, that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. But if you find that you're doing these kinds of insertions or deletions at the beginning of a list repeatedly in your program, often inside loops, for example, you will definitely see a performance degradation. And the larger the list, the worse it gets because it's an it's an on operation so the larger the list the longer it takes to actually remove the first element or insert a new element at the beginning of the list and just to show you that let's take a look at the timing because inserting or removing the last element of the list that's fine that's okay it's only when we talk about insertion basically at the beginning of the list so let's take a look. Let's say that we're going to create this list, L equals list, and we'll create a list based on the range function and we'll do 100,000. Okay. And I'm going to import time it. So let me actually do that above here. So from time it, I'm going to import time it. We're going to need that. So now we create this list and we're going to time it. We're going to say time it and we're going to time this piece of code where we're going to insert at index zero, the value zero. So I'm just basically doing a bunch of inserts on L. So I need to pass it L. So I'm going to basically just pass my globals dictionary to the globals here. And I'm going to repeat this operation a hundred thousand times like so. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put that in the same cell because I'm going to copy paste that repeatedly. And every time, since I'm modifying this list, every time I'm going to want to start with the same original list. So if we go ahead and time this, and I'll pause the recording and come back. Okay, so 7.49 seconds, right? Seven and a half seconds. Now let's do the same operation, but appending at the very end of the list. So I don't need to specify a position, just the number that I want to append. And again, we're just going to time that for 100,000 runs. You can see 0.012. So you can see the performance difference between inserting at the beginning of the list and essentially appending or inserting, if you want, at the end of the list. And then the same thing is going to happen also if we do the deletion. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got a list of 100,000 elements. And basically, I'm going to delete the first element each time. And of course, you know, I've got a, I'm repeating this 100,000 times, so that should be fine because I have 100,000 elements in the list. And again, let's time this. So that took 0 0.8 seconds. Definitely better than trying to insert at the beginning of the list, right? But let's take a look at what happens when we delete the last element of the list. So here, I'm going to delete the index negative 1. So basically, every time I run this delete, it's going to take the last element of the list and delete it. So if we run this, you can see, again, there's a big performance difference between deleting at the front of the list and deleting at the end of the list. So if you find yourself needing to perform those types of operations, then you're not really using the correct data structure for this. A list is not the correct data structure. The better data structure would be, for example, the deck that's found in the collections module. 
And in the notebook that you can download, it's linked below, I have a link to the Python documentation on the deck. So let's go ahead and import it. So from collections, I'm going to import deck. And we want deck. So a deck is essentially a very efficient list-like structure for adding and removing elements from either side of it. So you can append or insert elements at either end of the list or delete elements from either end of the list, or technically the deck, and they are both very, very efficient operations. So technically, deleting and inserting elements at the start of a list has O-N complexity, whereas the deck has O-1 complexity, constant time. So it doesn't also depend on the size of the deck. By default, decks have an arbitrary size. They can basically be unlimited, just like lists. But you can also declare limited-sized or fixed-size decks. Once a fixed-size deck fills up, any append operation on either end of the deck will push an element out of the other side of the deck. And I'll show you an example of that. So a deck is essentially a double-ended queue, hence the name deck. Now, one drawback, though, is we can use indexing to access elements directly in the queue, but be aware that this access can be slower than accessing elements by index in a list, especially if you're accessing elements in the middle of the deck. Then actually using a list for that is more efficient. However, accessing the element at the beginning or the end of the deck is very fast. So there are some trade-offs, but if you find using a list for queue-like behavior, inserting and deleting elements at the beginning of the list, then a deck is usually the better choice. So let's start with an infinite deck first. We can create an empty deck or we can initialize it with some values by passing an iterable to its constructor, just like we have with list, right? We can create an empty list by just calling list this way, or we can create an empty list by passing it some kind of iterable in here, like maybe range five like so, and then we'll actually get a list structure out of that. So the way that we create infinite decks is basically the same way. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is deck, and we're going to use now a list to basically initialize the deck with these five elements. So then if we look at DQ, you can see that DQ is a deck object that happens to contain these five elements. And we can access the elements by index. As I said, we can do that the, but, you know, if you start accessing elements in the middle of the deck, it's going to be a little less performant. And so you can see we return the first and second element from the deck. Now we can append to the left or the right of the deck. So this is basically just going to use the append method. So if we just append, let's say we append six, that's going to append to the right of the deck, to the end, if you want to think of it that way. So if we look at DQ, you now see that it has another element, 6. Now we can also insert an element at the front by using the append left method. So this is going to basically append to the left of the queue. Let's say that we append left 0. So if we now look at the deck, you can see that now 0 was added to the beginning of the deck. And we can pop elements from the left or the right, just like we saw with lists, we could pop elements. Here with the deck, you can either do a pop left, and so there is no argument for pop left or for pop because it's only acting on the ends, right, of the deck, either the very first element or the very last element. Pop left is going to return the leftmost element, and it is then going to give us, a, you know, it's going to return it, and it's going to basically modify the deck. So... You could have done this, you could have said result, because remember that Jupyter only prints the last output, so we could do that. Now that's going to basically remove one more element, so you can see the, the deck now is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and result happens to be 1, which was the element that was popped. Now we can also pop from the right, from the other side of the deck, and for that we just use dq.pop. Again, we don't pass an index. This always acts on the last element. Again, it's going to return it. So you can see it returns 6. And if we look at what the deck is right now, it's 2, 3, 4, 5. That 6 is gone. 
Now we can also extend a deck just like lists, but unlike lists, we can extend the deck at either end, either at the left or the right. So let's try that. Let's say DQ dot extend. So this is very much like what you would see, let's say with a list. So Y Z and you can extend a list with another list. So if we do that and look at DQ, you can see that Y and Z were added in that order to the deck. Now we can also extend to the left. And as you may have guessed, it's going to be DQ dot extend left. Now, if we go ahead and let's say extend left with this particular iterable A and B, what do you think the deck looks like now? Well, you have to think about how extend works. The way extend works when you pass it an iterable, it basically takes the first element of the iterable and then appends it to the deck, or if you were using a list, to the list. Then it takes the second element and appends it to the deck. So we end up with Y that got appended and then Z got appended. Well, what happens with extend left? Well, extend left is going to take this and append it to the front of the deck. Then it's going to take B and append it to the front of the deck. But by the time B is added in, A has already been appended. So what you actually get here is you see that you get A because that was appended first and then B was appended second. So it's kind of the reverse order. So just be aware of that. Now there are other things you can get, always get the length of the deck, for example, by doing like len of DQ. So this has eight elements and there's many other functions available. So check out the Python uh, docs that I provide the link for and just take a look at what some of the other functions are. The next thing I want to quickly show are bounded decks. So the methods available are the same, but the behavior is slightly different because the deck now has a max size, after which inserting elements at the left or right of the deck will cause elements to drop off from the other end. So it's very much like a bounded queue, except the deck works in both directions. So let's go ahead and create a bounded deck. So again, I'm going to initialize it right away. You don't have to, you could just specify max len equal to five. This will create an empty deck with a maximum size of five. But at the same time, I'm going to initialize it and I'll initialize it with five values right away. So this is our deck and you can see it's just a deck which has these five elements, but it also has a maximum length. Now let's go ahead and append something to the left. So I'm going to append zero to the left of this deck. So that's very easy. We just say append left and we append, let's say the number zero. So when we do that, let's look at the deck. You can see that zero is now at the front and you can see that five essentially got pushed off that deck. And of course the same thing will happen if you append to the right. So now if I say DQ dot append five, so I'm appending an element to the right, right of the deck. And so what's going to happen since there's a max length of five, it's going to push zero off. So if we do that and we look at DQ again, you can see that zero is gone. And now we're back to our original one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's the basics of decks. So now let's look at timings. And let's compare the timings of doing those kinds of operations, appending and popping for a list and for a deck. So the first one I'm going to bring back is the one that we did for the list, right? So this was the timing that we had for the list. And I'm only doing it 10,000 times instead of 100,000 times like just now. I don't want to spend the seven seconds waiting for it to finish running. So we've got that for 10,000 times took 0 0.5 seconds. Now let's do something similar but now for a deck. So I'm going to create DQ that is no longer going to be a list. It's going to be a deck. And again, we'll just paste, basically pass it this range 100,000. And then we're going to time what? Well, we're going to time DQ dot append left. And we're going to append the number zero, right? This has nothing to do with the index. Append left is always just inserting at the beginning. And we're also going to run that 10,000 times. You can see the order of magnitude, 0 0.5 seconds, 0 0.001 seconds. It's a huge difference. So next, let's go back and look at appending at the end of a list. We knew that that was much more efficient than inserting at the beginning. 
So that's the timing we get for that. And then I'm going to rerun this code, but for the deck now. And instead of append left, we're just going to append. And you can see the timing is definitely faster than, you know, the list append, but it's still kind of very, you know, comparable. So in terms of inserting at the end of the list or appending technically at the end of the list or the end of the deck, it's about the same cost. And now let's look at deleting elements from the left and the right. So the first one we're going to do is the one that we did for the list. So this was what we did. We basically popped the item at index zero, right? That returns something and it also removes it from the list. So when we run that, it takes 0.18 seconds. And now let's do the same thing with the deck. So we're going to pop and we're going to pop left, right? We want to remove the first element. So we use pop left and we get 0.001 seconds. As you can see, there is actually a large difference. 0 0.18, 0 0.001. You can see removing the item from the beginning of the deck is much more efficient than removing an item from the beginning of the list. Now we can look at removing from the end of the list and the end of the deck, and those are going to have relatively comparable performance. So here we're going to pop the last element of the list every time. You can see that took 0 0.002, and if we take the deck approach and here we're just going to pop, so therefore that's going to pop from the right, we get 0 0.001. So as you can see, the performance between removing an element from the end of the list and the end of a deck is about the same. So in conclusion, the takeaway here is to always use the most appropriate data structure for your particular circumstance. And if you need to continuously insert and delete elements from the left or the beginning of a list, you should really look at using a deck instead. The performance improvements can be substantial. Now, if you find that you really need slicing or direct access to elements inside the deck, because remember, decks don't support slicing, and accessing elements by index in the middle of a deck is actually less performant than using a list. So if that's your case, then you should look at both approaches and maybe carefully time your code and see which structure in practice is going to perform better for you. Or what you can do also, and I've used that technique in the past, where I need to manipulate a list by adding and removing elements from the end of the list or the beginning of the list. And so, and then maybe after that, I have to access the elements in the list using indexing in some kind of random order maybe, or whatever reason. So what I do is I split up the two phases. One is building this list up. So I'll use a deck to do the, all the inserts and the appends and the pops that I need to do. Once I've finished manipulating the elements of the deck, I'll then convert it into a list. And it's very easy to do. If you have a deck like we have here, right? Well, this has 100,000. So let's maybe create a different deck. So let's say deck and let's say one, two, three. So we have this deck over here. Now that's a deck. I can easily pass it to the list function. A deck is an iterable, right? You can iterate. You can say for element in DQ, print element. So a deck is an iterable. So you can iterate through it. Let me fix that. So this means that you can also essentially convert it to a list by passing it to the list function. And now you'll just get a list with the elements from the deck. So that's the approach that I've taken sometimes where I'll use a deck to do all the data manipulations. Once I'm done with that, I switch to a second phase where I convert the deck to a list. And now I have something that's maybe more efficient in terms of accessing elements inside the list. But honestly, that's rare. And if I'm going to be doing any kind of inserts and, and so on, with a deck, I'm probably just going to loop through the results at the end, you know, for some reason or other. So I rarely have to do this conversion to a list, but it might work in your particular scenario. All right, and that's it for decks. Thank you for watching.